portion is pretty much set up for me. I only have two choices. I can either put seven bottles here or seven bottles here. We're trying to make a comparison, right? So I said, if four two-liter bottles, how much does four two-liter bottles cost me? What I'm going to do is say four bottles equal 516. Are you seeing how that works for you? That's a nice way to set things up. Four bottles equal 516. Now you tell me where's the seven bottles go? Can the seven bottles go over here? No. No, it can't because this is this is not a bottles fraction, right? This is a dollars fraction. Seven bottles would have to go here. What's going to go here? Do we know how much seven bottles equals in cost? That's why the X goes there. Hey, look at that. What is that thing that we just set up? How do you solve a proportion? How many do you do this question? Isn't it if we divide this to take 4 divided by 516 and multiply that by That's what I told you. There's several ways to actually do this, OK? There's several ways. Uh, this one is just using a proportion. So you, you could do it that way. In fact, if you really think about it, that's exactly what we're doing. Um, just a slightly different order. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. You could. Now, because we have a proportion we can cross multiply, we get 4x equals 7 times 516. If you have a calculator, take that out and multiply 7 times 516 for me. 4x equals how much is 7 times 516? 0.12. So we multiply, we cross multiply, we multiply these numbers together. Last step is what? Yeah, if we do that, we're going to get what? 903? So you go back to the store, you buy your seven two-liter bottles, you know exactly how much it costs, you run through, you put down a $5 bill, four ones, and three cents, and you're out, right? Perfect. So you're really quick, you go back to your fun math party and everyone has a great time. How many people enjoyed our math party? <laughs> uh, I knew you would. Next time we might have a pizza party. Ooh. That's about fractions though. So. Does it make sense to you? Now I want to give you another, another suggestion here. If you don't like the way this is set up, you could do four bottles and seven bottles. You could do bottles on the numerators and cost on the denominators. You just have to know that 516 would go with four bottles. So it would be 4 over 516, 7 over x. Notice how when you cross multiply, that makes no difference. Okay. One last little application of these proportions deals with a little bit of geometry. Have you ever heard of similar triangles? We will first similar triangles. We will take a geometry in here. Okay, good. Not a lot of you. This is new for you. That's fantastic. Have you heard of triangle? <laughs> no. That's enough geometry for, for this class, okay? You don't need to be a geometry quiz. Have you heard of similar? Just the word like we use in English? Yeah. What's similar mean? Same. Exactly the same? No. Kind, of kind of alike. Yeah. If you had a brother, you might look similar, or a sister, you might look similar. Are you exactly, exactly the same? No. Not unless you're twins, right? Which you might be, whatever. But similar means the same, about the same. In geometry, it has just a little bit of a different classification. It says it's very, very much the same. The only difference is same shape, just maybe a different size. It's kind of like an Austin Powers. You ever watch that movie, Austin Powers? And you get mini me. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Mini Me? It, it's like Dr. Evil, but like an eighth the size. Looks just the same. He's just he's one eighth size in every way. So he's just shrunk down. You know, that's that's who Mini Me is, and that's the idea of similar shapes in geometry. It's that you you have exactly the same proportions. You have the exact same comparison amongst amongst pieces. Um, in our case, amongst sides, it's just shrunk down or it, enlarged. Um, you, you see this in model cars a lot. You ever see a model car? Model cars have the same, uh, they, they usually have like 48 to 1 ratio or 24 to 1 or 12 to 1 ratio, which says that everything shrunk down by a factor of 12 or 48 or however much your, your car is. But I mean, the, the doors still look right, don't they, on a model car? And the hood still looks right because it's all in the right proportion. So that's what we're talking about similar. So in similar triangles, Well, 
What we have here are two shapes which are the same shape, the same exact look, only one's bigger and one's smaller. What we need to know is that in similar triangles, the sides, the, the corresponding sides, means the sides that match up, are proportional. Okay, let's go through a couple of these words. Proportional, we already know what that means. That means can be set up in a proportion. So proportional means you can make a proportion out of it. What's corresponding mean? It belongs to? In the same side? Okay. Kind of, yeah, exactly. So let's, let's do a little experiment. If I say, point to the part of your body which is corresponding to this part on my body, what would you point to? Would you go, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> probably not, right? What part is corresponding to this part for you? Hold it up. Yeah, hopefully, you, hopefully you're holding your left hand up, right? You're not going to go, <laughs> no, not, not quite, right? You, you're talking about matching up parts here. If I went corresponding to this part, you're going to point to your head, right? That's what corresponding means. It means the same part in a different shape. In our case, the same part on a different person. But in, in the shape, it says the same corresponding or matching up part. Do you understand the analogy there? So let me try to draw for you some similar triangles. Now, I'm not the best artist, so we're going to pretend I'm drawing the same shape here, okay? Even though they might look different. Triangle. Hey, that's not bad. It's pretty good. I'm glad to have that on video. Prove to people I can actually do that. So are those the same shape? I mean like the same even type of triangle, I know they're both triangles, but are they the same type of triangle? Yeah, yeah they're, they're quite the same shape. It's just one's much bigger, one's, one's smaller. Can you tell me corresponding sides? So I'm going to put some numbers up here and you tell me which ones match up, okay? So here's 12 and 9, and this is X and 15. Can you please tell me which side matches up with the 9? How about with this blank one? And 12. Good. Even if I were to turn this triangle around, those would still be the matching up sides. Do you agree? Even if I had pictured it differently, those would still match up. So in the same, uh, you have to look at the same relationship amongst those sides, that means corresponding. So 9 and 15, those are corresponding. Blank side, blank side, and then 12 and X. What we know is that we can set up a proportion from these corresponding sides, and this allows us to find missing sides. That's kind of cool in geometry that you're able to do that. So here's how we do that. Very similar to the last problem, only this time we're not talking about bottles and money, we're talking about corresponding sides. You have two options. Again, you can match up sides here, or you can match up sides here. I like to do it this way, that way I'm working on one fraction, okay? That's just what I do. I'm sorry, um, I like to do it, like keep one triangle here and one triangle here. That way it keeps it easy for me. So we're going to do the same thing that we did over there. I'm going to start with 12. Can you tell me what side 12 kind of equals? What I mean is corresponding, but what side is 12 equal? X. Cool. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Now, what has to go here? Nine. Notice we have to keep the same triangle here. So 9 has to go here. How much does 9 kind of equal? I gave it away there, didn't I? My bad. So we set up this proportion. We have 12 is corresponding to x. We have 9 is corresponding to 15. We have to keep the same triangle in each fraction, just like we had to keep the same units in each fraction over here. Very similar idea. If we cross multiply, that's no surprise, right? We can cross multiply these proportions. We get 9x equals 12 times 15. Someone help me out with 12 times 15. 180. 180? That makes it nice, because when we divide by 9, we're going to get 20. And we find a missing side to a triangle. Kind of nice. Not too bad, right? As long as you remember how to set up that proportion. Now again, you did have an option here. You didn't necessarily have to do 12 equals x. You could have done, I want corresponding sides this way. 12 over x 
9 over 15. It won't make a difference because when you cross multiply, that's commutative. It doesn't matter which order you do that. So you have options on proportions on which to do. How many people understood the similar triangles idea? Good, okay. Okay, let's move on. I think we're ready for ready for a legitimate word problem. Well, not legitimate. This this isn't going to be like Tim and Sue build a house. How much did they spend or something like that? We're going to have like a sentence that's all about math, and we'll be able to translate it, and then that will lead us into a legitimate word problem. So here we go. So write this down. The quotient of a number and two. Haven't you had those your whole life? The quotient of a number of two. Oh. Just think about me, my poor life. I've had these literally my whole life. Okay? So forget you guys. I'm the one who's struggling. You picked it. Did I? Did I? What if it was forced upon me? My dad was a math teacher. What if I just had to do this? <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> I secretly just go home and study English all day. <laughs> no, that's not true. Okay, that sounds like enough for us. I'll push some homework in this pass around a little bit fast, okay? Oh, here's your roll sheet. Get this pass around a little bit fast, okay? Here's another homework. Get this pass around really fast, okay? Make sure that goes fast. Okay, the quotient of a number in two minus one third is the quotient of a number in six. Um, setting up this problem goes back to like your pre-algebra class. This is how I teach this in pre-algebra. The first thing I teach is I want you to undermine all the words up here that mean math. And I want you to start with the word that means equals. What word up here means equals? Yes. Okay, how sentences work is everything that comes before the is is on the left-hand side of your equation. Did you know that? Everything that comes after the is is on the right-hand side. So when we have the is, that's a big step. That separates, hey, this is going to be on the right, this is going to be on the left. That's, all, that's what we need to know about these type of word problems, these equations. So let's go ahead and keep underlining. What's another word up here that means math? Start from the beginning. Okay, quotient. What's quotient mean? Divide. In our case, that's going to be a fraction. So we're going to have a fraction here. Let's keep on going. The quotient of a, num a number means something in math. What's a number mean? Does it have to be x? Okay, good. Let's pick something better like uh, b. The quotient of a number and two, well, two is kind of obvious. What's another? Minus. Minus, minus means? Minus, I hope so. Minus. One third is. We already had the is. That's our equals. Quotient, we already had that one. That's division. How about the number? What's the number? Is it different from the one you picked, or is it the same as the one you picked? So if I pick B here, this has to be B, quotient of the number and 6. Let's go ahead and do the right side. It's going to be a little bit easier. 